Now this is really, uh, so the secondary structure is also important for the placement of the side chains. So the side chains are going to add extra interaction spaces and that's going to be really important uh, when we start thinking about tertiary structure. Okay. Um, so on the top are, are different uh, configurations uh, or different views of an alpha helix. So uh, on the left panel here, for instance, in the top for an alpha helix, um, we're looking on the side-on view, which we've already seen, but here we're looking down the barrel of the alpha helix. Okay. So again, remember that down the barrel of the alpha helix, there isn't any space. And so you can kind of see this in the stick figure uh, looking down the barrel of an alpha helix. But what's important about the side chains is that they stick out from the sides of the cylinder, okay, uh, from the alpha helix, kind of like a wire brush or a cylindrical wire brush, okay. So they stick out uh, from uh, the twists in the alpha helix uh, out into the space, okay. And as it rotates, you know, the uh, side chains are uh, sticking out and, uh, and moving with the polypeptide backbone, all right. The beta sheet, all right, also has a similar, uh, as a similar structure where we can see the planes, okay, of the two sheets. So there's one kind of here and then one kind of following this trajectory, all right. Um, and so what you see though is that there, are the side chains, all right, stick out from the top and the bottom if you want to think about the plane between these two uh, polypeptide backbones. So they sort of stick on the top. So there's a face here and there's a face down here. All right. Is that seeable? Let's see. Let's try this again. Let's try red. So there's two faces. Okay. All right. The alpha helix can also have a face. All right. It can also s sort of orient itself so that the residues have faces. So you can think of a face on the right side of the helix and a face on the left side of the helix. Okay. So that's really important because what, uh, what happens typically within these structures or what can happen in these structures is that one face can be lined with hydrophilic residues while the opposite face can be lined with hydrophobic residues. So therefore, the secondary structure can facilitate making uh, itself amphiphilic, all right? So it has a hydrophilic and hydrophobic side. And that allows um, for certain parts of the secondary structure to either interact outside with, uh, with the water uh, in the cell uh, that makes up most of the cell, or it can cause hydrophobic collapse. And we'll talk about that in the next video.